Hello, this is Eric Chappelle, author of AutoCAD Civil 3D 2014 Essentials, and this is the Essentials and Beyond exercise for Chapter 4. In this exercise, we're asked to create a surface in the drawing from the contour data. I'll start that by opening Prospector, and then from within Prospector, I'll right-click Surfaces and say Create Surface. going to name this surface EG from Contours and the style of C existing contours 5 feet will work just fine. Now I can click OK. The surface appears in Prospector and I can browse beneath it until I find the contours node located under definition. From there I can right click and pick add. I'll accept all the defaults in this dialog, click OK. And then I'm simply going to select all of the contours in the drawing, except I don't want to get this green outline. So it's important to exclude that because that is uh, at elevation zero and is not intended to be a contour in the surface. When I hit enter, you can see uh, the gray contours appear, but really obvious is that we have a, now a three-dimensional model of that surface that's visible in the 3D view at the bottom right corner. For the next part of this exercise, we're going to use the heavy green polyline to serve as a boundary for the new surface that we just created. The idea is to contain the surface inside of this boundary represented by the green polyline. To accomplish that, I'll come over here into Prospector, right-click Boundaries, and click Add. Note the different kinds of boundaries that we can choose from. This we want to be an outer boundary because we're containing the surface inside of it. I'm going to click OK, select the green polyline, and just like that you can see the gray contours are contained within that polyline, and then over in the 3D view we can see that the area represented by the surface has been reduced greatly to only exist within that bounded area. So that's all there is to it. That's uh, how simple it is to add a boundary to a surface. The next thing we're asked to do is an elevation analysis of the surface so that we can show the distribution of high and low elevations across the surface. To accomplish that, I'm going to select the surface and pick Surface Properties. And to do an analysis is kind of a two-part process. First is the analysis itself, and then to apply a style to the object, in this case a surface, that displays the analysis results. So we're going to do an elevation analysis. I'm going to break it down into three ranges. The book really doesn't tell you how many ranges to use, so feel free to use however many you want. And so I'm going to call this low, medium, and high elevation ranges. And for the low ranges, I'll call those green. For the middle ranges, maybe we'll use yellow. And for the high ranges, I'll use red. Something else I can do with the ranges is to maybe use some even numbers. So maybe this range can be 160 to 185. And this will be 185 to 190. And then this will be 190 to 205. So that's the analysis itself. Now I need to switch over to the Information tab and apply a style that shows the results of that analysis. And I'm going to use Elevation Banding 3D because um, if you've noticed this book is a little bit more about 3D than the past versions if you're familiar with the past version. So we're trying to look at more things in 3D, analyze and work and design more in 3D. So why not try that right here. So let's see how this turned out. I'm going to click OK. And in the plan view, we can see the colors of the tin triangles that represent the low, medium, and high. So we can see that we have a high area through the middle of our surface and another high area over to the west edge. But then if we look at it in a 3D view, that looks pretty impressive as well. We can really see not only the colors representing the, uh, the surface, the high, low, and middle ranges, but also the actual three-dimensional representation of them. Now the style that I used happens to be exaggerated in the vertical, so the mountains aren't as tall and the valleys aren't quite this deep. They are exaggerated, but it really helps to tell a story about 
what is going on in that surface. So now that that's complete, we'll switch the style back to one that shows contours, which is uh, one of the great things about using styles is just like that we can switch back and now show existing contours at a five foot interval. And if we want to go back to the elevation analysis, now it's just a matter of changing styles once again. So that's actually one of the steps in your exercise is to change the surface to, uh, to this particular style. Our next task is to do some spot elevation and slope labeling. So I typically teach people when they're doing labeling in Civil 3D to start with the generic add labels command. So here I'll come to the annotate tab and I'm going to click the top half of the add labels button which launches the add labels dialog box. Now you can also, for example, click on an object. Let me turn off that uh, selection cycling. You can click on an object and there's an add labels button that that shows up on the contextual ribbon tab and gives you whatever labeling commands are available. Those work as well. And this approach works especially well if you don't have a ton of styles to pick from where you're typically using the same defaults all the time. But here's the, the downside of using this, this approach is it's going to go ahead and add the labels without giving me the option to choose what styles I want to use. So that's why I tend to gravitate towards this approach because I can line everything up exactly the way I want. I can say I'm labeling a feature, this, in this case a surface, and I want to do some spot elevation labels and I can choose my styles and, and go on with my labeling using the styles that I want to use, not whatever the defaults happen to be. So there's lots of different ways to do things in Civil 3D. When it comes to labeling, this is my personal preference. I always use the Add Labels dialog, and that's what I tend to teach people. But for your case, you may, you may prefer to use the commands on the contextual ribbon. You'll find out on your own what, uh, what works best for you as you get more and more time working with Civil 3D. So the elevation only existing style is the one that's current. That will work just fine. Marker style spot elevation also just fine. I'll click the add button and drop a few spot elevation labels in here. And typically we label high points and low points and points of interest with, um, with spot elevations. And that's what I'm, uh, those are the spots I'm picking now, high points and low points. So that takes care of the spot elevation labels. To do that, I'll change my label type to slope, and percent existing will work just fine. This has a one point or two point option. I'm going to use the one point option, so it will always point downhill. And I'll pick a few spots on my surface, and there's a 7.4% slope. A couple of other spots here that I might be interested in knowing slopes and that takes care of my slope label requirement for the exercise. Just to demonstrate how the two-point slope works, I'll click Add again, this time using the two-point option, and now I get to control the direction of the slope that I'm labeling, instead of Civil 3D picking the downhill direction for me. So the last thing we're asked to do is to provide some contour labels. So I'll change my label type once more to Contour Multiple. Multiple is going to let me label multiple contours at one time. Um, all of my styles refer to existing labels, so that's good. And I'll click Add, and the way this command works is pretty neat. I draw an imaginary line through the contours, and Civil 3D places a label everywhere that that line intersects a contour. So I can do that as many times as I want, create as many labels as I want, and anywhere that those lines cross, a label will appear. Another thing that's really cool about this is if I click on it, I can see the imaginary line and move the labels where they need to be moved. I can even copy that line around the drawing to create additional labels. So with the completion of that task, that concludes the additional exercise for Chapter 4.